Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. I wanted to bring you along today for a little uh, tour of my hanging baskets. It's been about a month now since they were planted. Uh, this first one here was planted about a week earlier, maybe two weeks earlier than the other two. And then I have one on either side down the fence line that were planted in a video about a month ago. So let's bring you in for a closer look and see how they're doing. There's some really great things and so there's some not so great things. So this is the very first basket uh, that I had put together and um, I put it together and had it hanging just a little bit earlier so you could see how it fills in. These baskets have a small little door or sort of pockets that you can fill with plants as you as you put the soil in so they can take a little while to kind of fill up and and uh, look their best but um, this one has really started to, to fill in and flow around after a month and uh, it'll just keep getting better in that way but I have noticed it's getting a little bit too much water so I have Bacopa in here which normally likes a lot of water but it's really starting to get that uh, yellow leaf with the, the dark green veining on the Bacopa and uh, the Calabracoa you might know as million bells it's uh, also doing that so I think we just have getting too much water in these pots I'm going to just because of the dark veining I'm gonna try giving the pots um, just a little bit of iron as well in my next time I come along to, to fertilize and water on the weekend I'll, uh, I'll come by with just a little bit of iron as well and just see just because there's the dark veining sometimes that can be a sign of chlorosis as well but I kind of think it's just too much water because um, the pots do seem like they're staying quite wet and even the petunias are, are yellowing out a little bit which is a little bit odd um, so with that happening the calabacoa has pretty much stopped blooming up here it was looking just absolutely fabulous a week ago and uh, now the blooms are starting to, to slow on it, and I think that's why. Um, I just turned this pot, so this is the side you're looking at now. This is what's been facing out into the sun for the last week. And about once a week I come and just turn them so that they're uh, getting even sun coverage. So the spots might be looking a little bit more sparse right now, but it will fill in. I have been uh, having some other issues with these pots, something that I've never dealt with before. Um, in in my yard I didn't think we had this problem here but I'm gonna take you over to the next pot and uh, let you have a look at that and show you what that problem is so this pot um, is looking pretty nice uh, and it still has lots of the calabacoa flowers it doesn't seem to be getting as much water maybe as the rest they're all on drip they're on the same system but uh, they just have these adjustable little um, heads and sometimes the adjustments are a little bit hard to, to get so I've pretty much turned um, actually the other two baskets right down to the lowest amount of drip they're get, they can get and this is still kind of a medium drip this basket seems to be okay with that but what I am having trouble with with this basket is what I suspect is tobacco uh, caterpillars I don't know if you can see how uh, chewed up this petunia is I've been taking lots off like this and finding a greenish and sometimes a kind of tan colored uh, caterpillars on here. I've just found, I don't know, about four maybe, but they really, they've been doing a lot of damage and um, it's kind of hard to enjoy the plants if uh, all you're doing is pulling off ruined bl blossoms. So. I think I pulled all the really bad ones off last night now and I want to see if I get any more damage. I was definitely seeing some some frass. You can see this leaf has been chewed and has some frass or fecal matter from the caterpillars on it and uh, it's been all over them. I can see some here. I don't know if you can see these little black dots along this uh, leaf and stem here. That's the frass from the caterpillar. Um, they're a little bit tricky to find. 
from what I've read, they come out more at night or they hide kind of on the undersides of leaves and they can really blend in. Um, but it's not something I've ever seen here before. So I did a little bit of research because I was, well, wondering, you know, could that be what it is? Because it seems like it's all the right signs, except I don't think we have them. And in my reading, they don't overwinter here. They can't survive our winters here. But um, a lot of things that I read said they blow in, like this, the northern states, uh, the worms can't overwinter there either. But the moth um, blows in on the winds in the spring. And uh, we had some very, very strong winds, um, some coming up from the, the south and the west this, uh, this June. And I'm wondering if that was, we don't usually have those strong winds in June, they're usually in May. And I'm wondering if that was late enough in the season that those moths were out and uh, they blew in from that. Because uh, it's not something I've ever dealt with before or ever seen, but it really seems like all the signs are pointing towards that being what they are. So what I've done to try and combat, combat it, and I'm hoping I don't have to do it a lot, is A, I've gone through and tried to pick off all the worms that I can and uh, hopefully get as many as I can though. They're, I haven't seen any that are small, so I'm guessing there's still some young worms on here that I just haven't seen, possibly eggs in the soil. So I'll keep looking. I've also come through and uh, late one evening once, you know, there weren't a lot of, or well, I wasn't seeing any like honeybees or other uh, butterflies and pollinators out. I came along and sprayed with a BT solution, BTK, because the the K is the uh, the thing you need on the BT bottle um, to know that it's the right um, BT for using on caterpillars. It's very specific to caterpillars. It won't actually harm like bees um, or any other kind of insect except for caterpillars from like the moth and butterfly um, category. So it's very specific in that way, but there are a lot of moths and butterflies that uh, you, you don't really want to be killing off either. So I was not really happy with doing that, but at the same time, these, this basket especially has been just uh, decimated. It's just starting to come back now. I did that um, five days ago now, I think. And the blooms seem to be opening. I'm having a lot less damage. So I'm thinking either the picking of the worms or the BTK has uh, made a difference with this basket. So I'll just keep my eye on it and hopefully I don't have to be doing um, weekly applications of that. I know in some places they do, but uh, I would prefer not to be doing that. But overall, this basket has bounced back and uh, it's looking really nice. I'm really loving the color of this caliber koa with that bright yellow center. It really, um, it really picks up the sunlight and, uh, and shines during the day. And uh, the white of the lobelia and the petunias just makes this a really bright basket. Because as you can see, there are times of the day where it, gets, uh, it is in a little bit of shade here. And uh, it's nice to have those, those bright uh, colors that really show even in shady times. So again, I just uh, turned this basket as well. So it would have been looking like this for the last little while. And now I've just turned it around this way. So like I said, I'll keep checking on these and, uh, and hopefully um, I won't be having any more trouble with those caterpillars, but I'm sure there's probably still a few in there. I'll keep you updated. As a side note, while we're down here, I'll show you something else. I was very happy to see that my um, snapdragons that I had planted out um, in a video early, early June, I think it was, were looking really, really ready to pop with blossoms, and hopefully you can see all that. Uh, and then I got down really looking at the blossoms and they have holes chewed into the blossoms and the leaves are damaged and they have this, I thought they were, I was like, well, is this aphids on here? And it's, no, it's frass from the worms, the caterpillars. So I didn't think they went after snapdragons. They do go over uh, 
after like Nicoshana and petunias and uh, I forget, there's a few plants that they will go after. Uh, I'd never seen snapdragons listed, but I pulled one off this plant last night and it's a lot of damage. There are some slugs in this area too, so the slugs might be doing more of the damage and maybe that uh, caterpillar was just hanging out here, but this plant and this plant both have frass on it, which makes me think those caterpillars have been doing their damage. So hopefully I get to see these uh, snapdragons, some of them bloom before they're all eaten. So this uh, hanging basket has done the best out of all three, I'd say. The calibrachoa is really full and thick in here and looking green leaved. It is starting to discolor just a little bit. So that's uh, a sign that things aren't the greatest. So I have turned the drip off to it, but it, uh, it hasn't continued to, to yellow. So I think I, think I caught it in time. Um, this uh, red storm petunia, I'm really, really liking up here in amongst the, the white calibrachoa. The lobelia is starting to fill in and look really nice here and drape down and hang over. I'm not sure about this uh, fire frost petunia. You know, I've grown it in some hanging baskets the last few years and some years it seems to stay tight and full and look nicer and maybe it's just when I have more of it all together it just looks looks better but with these tighter plants one little fire frost got uh, snuck in here remember I kind of got some of my petunias mixed up and uh, they were all supposed to be the red storm in here but of this one one little fire frost and it's just um, it's just looking a little bit gangly in here compared to the nice compact look of the rest of them. So I'm not sure if I'm just gonna keep pruning it back and uh, trying to keep it in check with the rest of the, the look of the basket or just let it go and do its thing. I haven't quite decided yet, but I'm really liking how this is looking here, how full it is. And uh, right now it has yellow lilies underneath it. They're looking stunning and I really like that look. Uh, it had some red lilies before that, that complemented this really well. And there's a, a few white um, echinacea and daisies down here. So those are going to really start popping and, and working together in this look as well. So it's really nice when an idea comes together and, and it works cohesively with the whole area. So really happy with this one. So hopefully you enjoyed having a, a quick peek at uh, the hanging baskets and how they're doing. Oh, is this combinations you would do? Uh, is there a favorite combination you'd like? I know I had someone in my last video suggest nasturtiums. So that's something I'm gonna try and remember to do next year is try some nasturtiums in my hanging baskets and see how they go. Uh, I did have one casualty of a petunia here. It wasn't looking real good when I put it in. These were plants I grew myself. And uh, so I've just taken a cutting and popped it in this uh, spot here and sometimes they'll root for me and sometimes they won't so time will tell on that. It's been about a week and a half since I first did that update and um, I've done some treatment uh, to these plants and I think they're looking quite a bit better. So like I said the leaves on the Bacopa and the Calibrachoa especially were turning um, a really pale green to almost yellow um, which could indicate too much water, but they also had very deep um, green veining, which generally often is chlorosis or um, an iron deficiency. In a lot of cases, there's iron in your soil and you can, um, you just need to acidify the soil um, to help make it more accessible to the roots uh, so they can take it up. But being that this is potting soil, and it's not in the ground and it's the same potting soil I use everywhere, I thought it was kind of odd that um, these planters would um, not have the right um, pH uh, for the soil, whereas everything else does. Um, but I did wonder because I think, if I recall properly, I used um, a different um, all-purpose um, slow-release fertilizer in these to experiment with them. And I'm wondering, I don't have the container for it anymore, but I'm wondering if it was just maybe lacking. I thought it was supposed to be a pretty nutrient dish rich um, fertilizer. Um, it smelled very much like fish fertilizer, um, but it, um, I thought it was supposed to contain, contain minerals as well. 
But anyways, I I'm suspect that it maybe just didn't have enough iron in it or it had too much. I think it's, is it phosphorus? One of those, uh, too much of one of the NPK can also make it uh, difficult for the iron to be taken up. So um, what I did to alleviate that is, I, like I said, I wanted to add some iron. I find it difficult here to, to find iron um, supplements for your plants in the stores. Um, I know some places it's readily available. I suspect in my area it's just not a, a common thing to need, maybe. So what I did is I just used this fall lawn fertilizer. Uh, it has a lot of iron in it in fall fertilizer. So this is it here. Um, it doesn't really matter what brand you use, but it's just little pellets that you would sprinkle on your lawn. I just sprinkled it really lightly just on the soil surface. And now this isn't obviously to manufacturer's directions and it's not perfect, but it did seem to make a difference. Um, the leaves are definitely much greener now, much greener than they were before. Um, you can still see some of the little bits of yellow from some of the older leaves, but the new growth is much, much greener, looking a lot better. I did um, adjust the uh, sprayer so it's getting a little bit less water, but they're really drying out. So that I don't think is the issue and too much water in a hanging basket often isn't the issue. Um, I do have some product in there to keep them extra moist. So it could be, but when I feel it, like it's, it's bone dry right now and they were watered this morning. So I think it really was the iron that was the issue with these. And I'm wondering if maybe just that fertilizer that I used or something with this bag of soil that was just not quite quite right um, but I just threw this in here right now just to show you a little bit more of this iron um, and then I won't do it in the other baskets so we'll see if they change anymore if it affects them anymore um, the other thing I was having trouble with that I talked about earlier is the uh, the tobacco uh, budworm I think it's called so there's a little bit of damage on this plant and I'm not sure if it's from that. I haven't seen any more worms um, on any of my plants and like that's the, the just a tiny bit of damage there. I'm not even sure it's from a from a, a worm. Um, so let's look at the other pot that was really bad and we'll see what it looks like. But I think that may have solved the issue. So there's some deadheading to do, but you can see the blooms, the blossoms are all looking really good on here now. There's zero damage, some old blossoms need to be deadheaded. There's no damage on the leaves, no damage on the blossoms. They look much better. Even the snapdragons, which I'd shown you below, um, are not looking damaged anymore. So I just did one treatment with the BT. I don't really want to have to use this all over in my yard um, because it will damage any caterpillars, not just um, the ones I don't want on my plants, but it will cap, you know, the, all the beautiful butterflies and monarchs, any of that. Monarchs won't lay their eggs on this, but you know, any of those ones that you want to get the, the other butterflies and, and things going in your yard, this will damage them, this will kill them. So. You don't want to just use it um, wherever and freely unless you need to. So I'm going to keep an eye on these and watch my petunias very closely this summer. Uh, but I won't be treating them anymore unless they really um, are getting damaged again. And I can't, I don't feel like I'm finding the worms to pick them off. So, but like I said, it's the BTK that you need to use for the caterpillars. So I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing my hanging baskets and how they're doing and um, seeing you know it's it's not nice to see people have problems I know in their garden but it's good to see how other people deal with the issues that they are having so I hope that uh, you found this interesting and hopefully helpful if you are having some of the same problems and uh, you'll be able to to take care of them now hopefully so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time bye